This episode of Scam School brought to you by Netflix and GoDaddy. My name is Brian Brushwood. I host a little show on the internet called Scam School. We call it the show about social engineering at the bar and on the street, which is a fancy way of saying using magic and trickery to screw your friends out of free beers. While we're on the subject of school, though, I thought we'd start off with a little bit of a history lesson in a subject I don't think most people know too much about. The subject, of course, is fire eating. Now, the concept of resistance to fire is one as old as history itself. As far back as the ancient Greek tragedy Medea, references are made to holding a bar of red-hot iron in one's hands to prove innocence or sincerity. The first written account of a fire eater, however, occurs in 1607, when Sir Henry Wotton wrote of an English sailor who could eat fire as though it were candy. With that in mind, I'm gonna show you guys the simplest method to extinguish a torch with one's mouth. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're actually applauding for that. Do me a favor, let's kill some of these lights so it looks better, it looks a little bit more impressive. More like this. There we go. Now the first commercially successful fire eating act went on tour during the 1680s. It was performed by a French man known only by the name of Richardson. He was renowned not only for his ability to swallow flame, but also for the apparent affinity he would display for it. In fact, many people claimed that his teeth and gums were so calloused, he could actually hold a burning torch between them, just like so. At which point his audiences went freaking nuts. It was awesome. Much better. By the 1800s, we come to a time that some people call the golden age of fire eaters. All right, guys, for this next bit, I need somebody who will do absolutely anything. Who's my man? Let me, right there, what's your name, bud? Brian, get on up here. Let's hear it for this guy as he makes his way right up here on stage. Make some noise for him. As he comes, over the OSHA approved jumping over the stanchion. Get on up here. What was your name? Was it Ryan or Brian? Ryan. Ryan? Ryan yeah. Awesome. Get on over here, Ryan. Look, there's one thing we have not done in any live scam school until now. There's one point that we're going to cross. We're going to do a card trick. Now, I don't know about you, I hate card tricks because every single card trick has four fundamental aspects to it. You have to have a card selected, identified, lost, and then found. So let's just get through this thing so we can get on to the good stuff. First of all, verify not a trick deck. Make sure everyone knows nothing tricky it's about legit. it. Just, it is legit. Thank you. <laughs> Ryan, reach forward, just touch the back of any one card. It doesn't matter which one. Go ahead and show the audience. Boom, one element down. We have had a card selected. Second of all, we have to have the card identified. And for that, there should be a Sharpie marker. That is gone. Hey, there we go, here we go. You got one right here. Holy crap. You're the freaking wizard. What the hell is that? Do me a favor, buddy, I want you to nice and neatly print in the middle of your card. Neatness counts just your first name in the middle of that card. You got it? All right, and by all means, take your time. So we're two down. We've got a card selected, we have a card identified. Once you've printed your name on there, I want you to fold it in half with your signature on the inside. You got it? Excellent, fold it in half again a second time. And now here's where things get interesting. We had a card selected, we had it identified. Now we need to lose the card. Traditionally, this is done by throwing the card somewhere back into the deck. We're gonna be a little bit more esoteric here. Here's what we're gonna do. You'll notice the cards already weigh, no opportunity for a switcheroo. We're just gonna go ahead and heat this puppy up here. You can see, some people think uh, that this is like magic flames and it's not really burning, in which place I say, screw you. So it's clear, now the problem is your card's not gone. I mean, it's all burnt up and it's got ashes here, but we wanna lose your card, and I mean lose. So we're gonna chop up all these ashes, just like it's like a goddamn cooking show up here. All right, we're just gonna, there we go. And their ashes are there. I'm not doing any last minute ashes switcheroo here. You can see that the ashes really are going inside the bowl. You see that, Ryan? Now we get to the most important part. Ryan, do you like chocolate pudding? Hell yeah! <laughs> well, good. I love this guy, dude. We're gonna take the chocolate pudding, we're gonna drop it right on your card. That looked lovely. I'm gonna mix it up here, do me a favor. 
I just want you, just taste that. Just taste that. Just how's it? Yeah, it tastes fine, right? Yeah. Do me a favor, buddy. I want you to wolf that down as fast as you can. The faster you eat, the more they're going to cheer. Watch. Yeah. We are in. Oh, what a good boy. All right, we are in the home stretch. We have had a card selected, identified, and now lost. I think we could agree, Ryan, that it would be extremely difficult for me to retrieve your card. <laughs> Ryan, do me a favor, buddy. I want you to lay down on this table with your head down at this end, your feet down at this end. Come around right up in front. There we go. Have a seat right here. Head over here. Head over here, if tail's over there, there you go, go and lean, make yourself comfortable. Yep, 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 by all means, make it as awkward as you possibly can. There, put your feet right here and your head goes there by default. There we go, now we're getting somewhere. There we go, lay all the way down, we'll make a spot for you. I'm gonna cover up, go and lift up your shirt all the way up here if you don't mind, there we go. <laughs> Stop flexing for the ladies, relax, relax. <laughs> He's even not tickled, He's like tickle, tickle, tickle. All right. I was a professional. All right, here's what I want you to do, bud. This is gonna feel a little bit weird. Uh, it may pinch just a little bit. Uh, and I'm sorry, this water is cold, dude. I'm sorry, it's, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's cold. Uh, that's, <laughs> this is gonna feel a little bit weird. Just relax, here we go. Oh yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, all right, hold on, hold on. Wait, no, 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 every, so everything goes according to the plan here. Here we go, and that's, I don't know what the hell that is. Uh, let's get one of this. That's not good, and, uh, and I think that actually goes there. Um, that's, all right, hold on, let me get this cleaned up here on this side, and if there, there should be a little bit more. That's weird. How, how, the hell did, how the hell did one of those get in there? <laughs> wait, wait, no, right, right, if, if, you, look, if you look inside the uh, uh, balloon, uh, there's actually, there's actually something in there. Do you see something in there? Yeah. All right, here's what I want you to do. I want you to hold out your hand, palm up just like this. I want you to pinch just that tip right there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. You'll see there's no switcheroo. That's yours to keep. And then finally, <laughs> once and for all, Ryan, what was the card that you picked earlier? Ace of diamonds. The ace of diamonds, would you verify? Is that the ace of diamonds? Yeah. Second of all, would you look right there printed in the middle? Is that your name printed in yeah. the middle of the card? Yeah. Let's hear it for Ryan. He did a fantastic job. <laughs> There we go, let me get you all out of there, buddy. There we go. Don't worry, that'll come right out in the wash, hopefully. I'm pretty sure about it. This week, we continue our graduate level course in crime and deception through the use of Netflix by checking out one of my favorite picks from the 1990s. The Last Seduction, made in 1994, stars Linda Fiorentino and Bill Pullman. Fiorentino plays an absolutely evil, calculating swindler. The way she's able to manipulate, to lie, to deceive, and turn everything to her advantage is absolutely hypnotic. I had a blast watching this one, and you guys will as well. And the best part is, you can get it absolutely free by signing up for your free no risk two week trial at www.netflix.com slash scam school. Now remember the www is at the beginning just as important as the scam school at the end to make sure we get credit. Now you know Netflix has tons of movies available for instant streaming but this one's going to be on a physical disc but with 50 shipping centers nationwide it's going to be there in less than one business day. What are you waiting for? Get on over there. <laughs> Here's the thing, every time people ask me whether or not I believe in psychic powers, I always, the, the short answer is of course no, because I'm a rational human being. Uh, but, but it makes me think back to when I was a kid and I wanted so bad, not only to believe that psychic powers were real, but that I had them, so I'd make up all these tests to see if I had ESP. You know what I'm talking about, you're sitting at the kitchen table trying to guess what the next card is in a deck of playing cards, that kind of thing. And in the middle of doing all these tests, I had an experience. And while this experience didn't convince me that ESP was real, it did convince me that sometimes you just get lucky. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Let's turn that up. A little bit louder than that. All around me are familiar faces, worn out places, worn out faces bright and early for the daily races going nowhere going nowhere hide my head i want to drown my sorrow no tomorrow no 
tomorrow And I find it kind of funny I find it kind of sad The dreams in which I'm dying Are the best I've ever had I find it hard to tell you I find it hard to take When people run in circles It's a very, very hard Actually, grab one of these right over here. Let me take you behind the scenes of something that you've heard about in Magic for a hell of a long time. Do me a favor, let me get uh, Brett Amtrek around some Let's make some noise for my friend Brett here. <laughs> Brett's gonna walk that thing out there. I want you guys to check out that bed of nails and make sure it's exactly what it seems. I want you to actually reach forward and touch those nails. I want you to see that they're not filed down. They're not made of rubber. They're not contoured to fit my back. I want you to appreciate that this pretty much hurts like hell. <laughs> A lot of people wonder where the bed of nails came from. The bed of nails dates back over 2,000 years. It was established by East Indian Hindu fakirs who originally used it as a device to focus their skills of meditation and spirituality. It wasn't until the 1800s that it came to America and became the crowd drawing ballyhoo we know it today. First of all, if you haven't taken a physics class, here's how the bed of nails work. You have enough nails, the weight of your body is spread out over the nails, so there's not enough pressure on any one nail to actually penetrate the skin. So as a result, it's very unlikely that you have many, very, very many bed of nails related fatalities. But there is a lot that can and does go very wrong. First of all, if the performer lays down too quickly on the bed of nails, or if too much weight is placed on him, he'll immediately be pierced, damaging internal organs and causing a bad day. By the way, amazingly, if you go to the emergency room with this type of wound, they'll basically put a Band-Aid over each of the holes, give you an antibiotic, and send you on your way. The bad thing happens when the performer's on the bed of nails and begins to panic and shift his weight foolishly. When he does, he ends up with a compound laceration, actually ripping the flesh off the back. In the short term, there's a tremendous amount of bleeding, and in the long term, there's no way around it. There's gonna be horrible, horrible scarring. So in other words, while it's very unlikely I will die doing the bed of nails, you could get to see some blood. You bastards are actually screaming for blood. All right, guys, at this point, I'm gonna have Brett actually walk out into the audience and pick a couple of volunteers. We're looking for a couple of ladies to help us up here on stage. And meanwhile, I'm going to prepare myself to face the bed of nails. Why is it always the dudes who cheer then? All right, guys, bed of nails. Regardless of whether it's performed as a religious ritual or as a sideshow stunt, there are a few key factors that are always the same. The first is the performer always takes a moment to center himself before putting a quick getting on the bed of nails. The ancient fakir talked about going into a trance. That's a bunch of BS. What matters is that the performer take a moment to calm himself so he doesn't do anything stupid while he's in a position of very real danger. Next up, are you cheering for me calming down? Is that really what just happened? <laughs> Next up, the performer centers his weight over the bed of nails, laying down first the covered extremities until finally his entire body suspended on the bed of nails. Now, the ancient Hindu fakirs did not stop there, but rather subjected themselves to certain 
tests while they were in this state. To that, that extent, I've asked these two women to join me on stage because in just a moment, both of them are going to stand on me. All right, let's get both of you guys right over here. My name is Brian, what is your name? All right, let me get you right over here if you don't mind, one more, uh, on this side. There we go, that'll be just fine. Let me get you, and your name is? Shama. Shama, okay, first of all, a couple of things. In just a moment, Bonnie, you're gonna put your, right, your left foot right here on my chest, not on my neck, on my chest. Your left foot is going to go right here on my midsection, all right? Your right foot or left foot is going to go slightly below the belt. <laughs> And your right foot is gonna go on my lap. Now try to distribute the weight evenly over both legs because otherwise it hurts like hell. All right, when you step up, you're not gonna hop up, you're not gonna bound up. Each of you keep a hand on Brett's shoulders. You're gonna step up like you're stepping onto a log or a step, okay? When you, once you're on top of Brian, above all else, no bouncy, bouncy, okay? <laughs> In a moment, I'm gonna excuse you to step back down. When you step down, this is the important part. Don't hop off, don't leap back. I just want you to look where you're stepping, make sure you're stepping on the stage, because if you step on the bed of nails, you will injure your feet. Do you understand? Do you understand? Are you ready to do this? Are you ready to do this? All right, get in position. Left feet first, put them right up here. There we go, we're gonna go on, and then, and then oh, wait, a little bit closer. And get your other feet all the way up here, touching right up, right up here. There we go, excellent, there we go. We're gonna put this a little bit closer. That's my junk, there we go. All right, let me get you up a little bit closer here, Brett. Hold on, hold on, there we go. All right, ready? We're gonna go on three, nice and slow. Take your time, one, two, three. Nice and easy, all the way up, all the way up, all the way up, all the way up. You may applaud now! You can get off of me now! Take a nice big step back. Make sure you're stepping on a solid stage. Let's have a huge round of applause for both our volunteers. They did a great job. <laughs> all right, now Brett's going to give you a hand. Get on up here. Here we go. Right up here. One, two, three. All the way up, 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 up. Do me a favor, guys. Make some noise if you can see those divots on my back right now. A lot of people think those are puncture wounds. Those are actually not puncture wounds. The skin has phenomenal tensile strength. Those are actually parts of the skin that have been stretched so hard that it's actually left a temporary divot in my back. The amazing part is that those divots will stick around for as many as six or seven hours after the show, and the red welts caused by the stress on the skin will stick around for as much as a day. So in other words, if after the show, while we're hanging out, and by the way, I hope I get to meet all you guys while we're hanging out, but if somebody walks up and says, hey, Brian, Take off your shirt. Hello. Oh, they say, hey, Brian, take off your shirt. It, it's cool. <laughs> no, I mean, so, so you can see that you can see. Oh, no, not yet. Thank you. All right, by now, you know the game we're playing with our Domain Smack contest. We're looking for the most absurd, the most outrageous domains that are being used to insult your friends. Because they're so easy and so cheap through our sponsor at GoDaddy.com to purchase, you can do it just to spite your friends. You can mock anything from big business to celebrities to the secret loves and desires of your friends. Which is exactly what I got in this letter from Erlen Finvold. A friend of mine is a huge fan of Kevin Rose, so I registered in love with KevinRose.com and linked it to his Facebook page. That's exactly what we're talking about. I want to see you guys get creative. Send them to me at brian at revision3.com and we'll feature them right here on the show. But the important thing is when you register your domain, make sure to go to godaddy.com and use the promo code SCAM10 at checkout. That'll get your domain for $7.49 each and they'll forward it anywhere you want absolutely free. Get your piece of the internet at godaddy.com. How would you guys like to set some freaking world records tonight? Let, uh, let me bring out my co-host from NSFW on the Twit Network, Mr. Justin Robert Young. Show him some love, people. We're going to bring on stage our favorite world record authority, the gentleman from the Universal Records database, headed up by Mr. Dan Roman. Let's make some noise for all these guys. Get on up here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to break tonight check, three check. world records. The first one, what did you come up with? What did you like? All right, here's what we're doing, folks. Everybody here is having a great time, right? And therefore, by proxy, everyone who's not here is miserable. Yes. We're going to make it even worse. Everybody, take out your cell phones, and you're going to Twitter out a hoax. <laughs> we're going to lie to the lie. entire world. And we are going to do the world's largest online Twitter hoax at a live event. Yes! So here's the deal. Nobody here knows what's going on. Although except for some jerks live streaming it, Leo. 
Hi. So, but here's what we're gonna do. We're going to lie to the rest of the world and tell them that we just confirmed live on stage that Conan O'Brien is joining Revision 3. Now, now, here's the key. For us to track it, you have to hashtag OMG Conan. OMG Conan, right? So you can say, holy crap, Conan just walked on stage. He's joining Revision 3. Hashtag OMG Conan. Or you could say, uh, hey, just confirmed, I just met Andy Richter because Conan's coming to Revision 3. Hashtag OMG Conan. All right, so start doing that right now. I can't wait to watch the fallout on this. We'll All get right. the actual numbers for this. There we go. Now, uh, while, while we're doing the other uh, record, let's talk a little bit about the Universal Records database. Dan Roman. Dan Roman, ladies How's and gentlemen. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> Woo! All right, so what the hell is the Universal Records database? Uh, so uh, we are world record aficionados. We love world records, and we saw the world record uh, world was really owned by an exclusive group. And we said, why shouldn't world records be available for everybody? So we've built this website, URDB, and it allows everybody to set whatever world record they want. Yeah, literally, this is the Wikipedia of world records. If you want to invent a pre-exist, a non-existing world record, what do you do? You just fill out a form and you're on, right? Yeah, basically, we, our belief is everyone on Earth can be the world's best at something. So as long as your record category is quantifiable and breakable, you just shoot it on video, your friend can be your witness, and you upload it to our site. Awesome. Okay, second of all, we're actually going to have a contest, a race between two people also need two psycho fans who are willing to do anything. Who are my people? Let me get you. And then you, yeah, both of you guys. Give these guys a big round of applause as they make it up here on stage. Head on over here, buddy. How's it going? I'm Brian. What's your name? Peter. Peter, actually, right on over here. Hey, by the way, I just checked Twitter. It's blown up. <laughs> is it really? That's all. Blown awesome. up. <laughs> all right, what are we going to do? This is, this is your demonic idea, is yes. it not? Here we go, folks. We are going to set the record for the fastest time someone has cleaned their own hands of barbecue sauce using only their mouth. Now, here's, here's the criteria, all right? By the way, can we get a shot of this lovely, lovely barbecue sauce? Here's the deal. It's got to be clean enough that either me or Dan Roman feels Yummy. comfortable shaking your hand for victory, all right? Okay. Now, by the way, here's the thing. The only, the only stipulation is you get one get wet nap. Or do you? Do you, you don't get a wet nap. No, no wet nap. No, no. Bare knuckled. All right, so here's the good. We're going to say ready, set, go. Whoever is the all the way ready and wants to present their hand, whoever's fastest, Dan, you're going to be timing, yeah. and then we'll have a world record, and right? Now, now, by the way, we have spotters here from the Universal Records database. They're going to be here monitoring. Me and Brett are going to be your coaches, so we'll guide you along. Yeah, so guiding you started, means shouting at you in. the entire time. Hands in, everybody. Both hands. Both, Both hands. hands. Both hands. Can all the way in. clean this shit up? Yes. Yes. All right, there we go. All right. So, so yeah, hands, hands all the way in, hands all the way in. There. Okay, wait, 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 on your marks. Get, are you giving me on, on your mark? Get set. Yeah. Okay, here we go, you guys ready? Are the, ha the hands are covered. On your marks, get set, go. Go! Oh. All right, come on, come on. Yeah, there we go, wipe it off, wipe it off, wipe it off. Now get the fingers, get the fingers, get the fingers, quick, 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 quick. There we go, buddy. You're the champ, you're the champ. No one ever tell you different. Go, 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 go. Fingers, 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 fingers. Fingers, fingers, fingers. All right, I'm the bench. 20 hands. seconds. We're at 20 go. seconds. They're wiping it off the table. Yeah, there we go, no. There's a... <laughs> <laughs> Check his hand. Whoa, 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 whoa. You don't mess with a star like that. Come on. Check his hand. Congratulations, yes. sir. Yes. We have a winner. Oh, yeah, we're giving it, we're calling it? What was the time? 37.06, a new world record! We got one more, and then we're gonna be out. First of all, thanks so much to the URDB. By the way, everyone who breaks a world record at the URDB thank gets you, sent one of these bomb-ass patches. I'm still looking for my pitfall patch back from 82. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, yeah, you guys are done. Get the hell out of here. Good job. No, I'm not, uh, all right, no, that's good, all right. All right, now what are we doing this last one? All right, you guys might have heard of a show called Late Night with Jimmy Fallon. Have you heard of it? Yeah. Whatever. 
These guys have gone on that show and Jimmy Fallon broke a record. He set a record for most drawn on marker mustaches. <laughs> In 30 seconds. What we're going to do is have our own Revision 3's Brian Brushwood break that record. Uh, what, what, what is the current record, by the way? The, oh, there's the count, 16. 16. 16. So I got to do 17 in 30 seconds, right? All right, here's the thing. If you're in the front row, get ready. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go right down the line. If you, if you don't want a mustache, if you don't want to be a piece a of freaking history, yeah, you get ready. All right, somebody give me a ready, set. All right, you gotta tell me when. All right, ready? Wait, 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 ready? Okay, are you ready, Brian? Yes, I am. Are we ready for to be mustache in the front? All right, on your marks, get set, go. Seconds. Keep going. There we go. There we go. Give me, give me, give me. There we go. There we go. There we go. How do we act? Seven. This is so eight. Twenty-nine. Stop. 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 Oh, wait. I already got your eyes. Is that the it? Last one. What is Orange it? Orange guy was the last. What's the final count? Twenty-three. A new world record. You beat Fallon. Hey guys, I can't thank you enough. I'm Brian Brush. Let's hear it for the URDB. I love you guys. <laughs>